When it comes to keeping poison dart frogs, it's tradition to build a beautiful vivarium for these guys. So in today's video, I'm going to take you step by step how I built this lovely vivarium for my little frogs so that by the end of the video, you have inspiration to build your own. And if you stick around till the end, I'll show you a two month update. My name's Ryan and you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptiles. Let's roll the tape. And for today's build, we're going to be using this nice, sleek Exoterra. Let's get it. I start off this build by laying down some black expanding foam on the back side. This will allow me to structure my walls. And as I'm doing this, I just think of that I'm frosting a cake. Don't judge me, guys. I'm a fat kid at heart. Then I'm going to be using the sweet Caspian driftwood. And it looks super sweet. I'm going to be laying it down on the back, using it as a ledge. And it looks like devil horns here. Don't you guys think? Then I flip the enclosure on its side and just imagine myself frosting a cake again. Then I let it cure for a few hours and then repeat the exact same process on the other side. Then I get my headphones on and just start jamming out. I then grab a paint scraper tool and start carving off all the expanding foam because if I don't, when I use the dry lock method, it'll just all slide right off. And when you carve it, all the foam becomes porous and that's how the dry lock will stick to it. I then use plastic food wrap and wrap it all around my driftwood to protect it from the dry lock. And you know, just wrap it up like you would a donut or a Barbie doll. Huh, that's not weird. And for people who don't know what dry lock is, it's just a waterproofer that cement and mason tenders use. I then grab a paintbrush and apply a thick layer of dry lock to all along the expanding foam and I like to make sure I get it as much as I can in between the nooks and crannies. Then I let it cure out for two hours. But light gray would just be a boring color, so I grab some black liquid coloring, mix it up to the consistency I want, and then I apply it to the background. Oops, that was not what I was going for. I was going for more of a dark gray, and here we go. And then I just apply a second coating of this coloring. The dark gray definitely looks better, but come on, let's add some more light to it. I can do better than that. I'm gonna spice it up by adding some brown liquid coloring to it. And you know, when I was making this, I was trying to go for like that bumpy rock look. And I think it would look cool if I put in all that brown in between the cracks, you know, trying to give it a look like there's dirt in that you would see like on a rock. And it looks a lot better now, but I'm gonna be real with myself. It could use a little more personality. So I'm gonna grab a paintbrush and add a little bit of black. And this is how my finished product came out. And I think it looks a lot better. That black kind of gives it some shadow, even though this isn't like my finest detailed art that I would have liked to done, but I'm gonna have plants cover it anyways. Then I add Lika clay pebbles sort of drainage layer, and I like to keep it at least like two inches deep, then followed by adding a window screen for the substrate barrier. And man, this is always a pain. I hate this part. It's... Then I add my homemade terrarium substrate. I get it up to three inches, and the link is in the description on how to make it. I then throw in a thick layer of sphagnum moss on top of it. Then I'm going to cover the whole entire floor of the terrarium with actual moss and it's going to look super sweet. And you know what? Remember how I was talking about how I wanted to be brown in between the cracks and give it that more realistic look? Well, I was thinking, even in between the cracks, imagine there was moss growing in between the cracks, you know, like you would see on the trail. So I'm gonna be adding this moss slurry, and this moss slurry here, in three months, will actually just keep growing, and it'll just give it that nice, luscious look. And the sphagnum moss in it just retains moisture so the actual moss can grow over time and get started. And if you ask me, this looks a hundred times better now. And wait till like three months from now, it's gonna be so awesome. Now let's start planning. So this is Pilea Dark Mystery, and I just love the leaves on it. And as I'm potting it in, you know, it's gonna be short and stubby like me, but don't worry, one day it'll be tall, dark, and handsome, which I won't. Next up is this super beautiful vining plant. This is called Monstera dubia. This comes from Costa Rica, and it's so freaking lovely with those silver patterns on it and I'm gonna pot it right here on the side wall. I then use garden wire to pin it to the wall. 
Then this beautiful plant is called Begonia Rex. And I love the silver leaves on this and the red undertones underneath it, giving those red veins. It just reminds me of watermelon. And I'm going to be using it on the right side and the left side in symmetry. And next up on the list is Begonia Pink Mink. I love the polka dots and the pink color on it and the red undertones and like the angel wing look it has on its leaves. Then next up is a couple of Neurogilia bromeliads and these are your wild tiger mini. I'm going to place them right here on this side of the foam wall. Then I use garden wire to pin it down until it establishes its own roots and I do the exact same thing on the other side. Then the next plant I'm going to use is called String of Arrows and as you can see where it gets its name from, I'm going to be using this as a ground plant and it should add a bunch of texture over time. Now this is like my second favorite plant I'll be using for this terrarium. It's a type of jewel orchid. I can't pronounce the name but look at the veins and the texture on the leaves. They're so beautiful. This orchid would do really well in low light so I decided to put it along the back side. Now what kind of dark frog vivarium would it be without leaf litter? So this is Washington oak leaf. And in the wild, a lot of the dart frogs will actually be found mainly on leaves. Next, I'll be using a coconut hide that's covered in moss right here in the back and it'll just blend in nice and beautiful. Now I'll be adding some botanicals and this will break down over time, fertilizing the plants and the frogs will be hopping all over it, providing some enrichment. All right, I'll admit to myself, I was not liking the look over here. I just felt like it was too flat and it needed a lot more going on the left side. So I decided to use some Siriu stone. I'm gonna be putting it over there and I'm gonna do it Iwagami style, kind of like what the aquascapers do. And this should really break up the monogamy of all the green. Then I'm gonna place this Malaysian driftwood and I'm gonna be having arching over from behind the rocks. And I'm gonna add another jewel orchid right in between these two rocks. And this is one of my favorite plants right now. This is called Philodendron varicosum. This is the dwarf version. And I'm gonna be placing it right here behind these rocks. And I'm just absolutely in love with the heart-shaped leaves and the veins on it and how the light just hits it. It just bounces off and just gives it a really nice glint to it. And this cute pilea is called the aluminum plant and I'm a total sucker for its sylvan pattern on its leaves and I think it will really contrast the other plants and I'm going to be placing it right here behind these rocks. Then this is called string of turtles. I'm going to be placing it over the sphagnum moss roots of the varicosum over here and it should grow over and cover it in time. And for my microfauna, I'll be using springtails. These guys are good for eating the mold, allergy, and fungus. And then I use orange powder isopods. These guys will help break down the waste of the dart frogs, and then it'll provide nutrients to the plants. And for my lid, I just cut a piece of glass and then place it on top of my vivarium. All right, let's add the star of the show already, guys. So these are Azurius tinctorius, and I love the deep mesmerizing blue on them. And these are the icons of poison dart frogs. Literally, this is what everyone thinks when they hear dart frogs. And I really think the black dots really complement and contrast well with the blues. And these are a really great beginner dart frog too. They're really bold, they're active, they're easy to care for, easy to breed. And I just love the way they eat. Just look at them. And they make this cute little smacking sound when they eat. And I love the way like they twinkle their toes when they're excited for food. All right, it's been two months now since I set up this vivarium and it's been growing so beautifully well. I've been loving how the begonias have been growing taller. The one on this side has just been growing nice and spread it out. And look at this varicosum. It has sprouted three new leaves since I planted it in here. And look how big they got. I just love that how lush it is now. Once it grows one more leaf, I'm totally gonna propagate and use it for another vivarium. And the Monstera dubia, that has been growing really well too. I've already had to propagate that three times. If you guys look at the mossler, it's already started and turn green it's having new growth i'm super happy about that and now let's talk about the lighting real quick so this light so the lighting here is a 24 7 higher led light cycle so in the morning it becomes orange and then it gets brighter throughout the day and then as nighttime comes it goes back down it has this blue moonlight effect and it's super cool and it's been growing my plants super well and i'm just really happy with how this vivarium is totally turning out my frogs are loving it and i just can't wait a few months from now when it actually starts growing out even more and if you guys enjoyed the video and 
learn something new today, then do me a favor, boop that like button. All right, guys, my name's Ryan, and you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptile.